So, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is another cooking video from me. And this one is especially for Peggy, for one of my subscribers. She was asking me to make a cooking video, so here it is, Peggy, this one is for you. So today, just like in my usual cooking videos, I'm gonna share three recipes with you. Um, a recipe for breakfast, then some soup recipe for, for lunch, and something else for dinner. So let's start making something. So guys, for breakfast, I would like to show you a recipe from my childhood. I really loved eating this when I was little. <laughs> I asked my mom to cook it very, very often. Um, and this thing is called a milk soup. Uh, when I was little, I didn't know that it was called that way. I simply, uh, I called it milk pasta or like uh, pasta in milk. <laughs> and only a couple of years ago, I found out that actually this thing is called milk soup. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna heat up some milk, boil up some milk, add a little bit of salt and sugar to our taste, and then we're gonna add some pasta, this type. Let me open it up and show you. This type, very thin, you know, thin like hair, <laughs> hair pasta. Um, in Russia we call this vermicelli, so we're gonna take some of this. Actually we call it like spider web vermicelli, or like hair vermicelli. So we're gonna take this. Um, Italian people, if there are any of you watching me, <laughs> I know that you are very, very uh, peculiar about the way pasta is cooked. If it is difficult for you to see that I'm gonna put it in milk, just turn around, okay? <laughs> so let's um, make this because it's very easy and very fast to make. I'm pouring a little bit of milk, enough for two of my boys, adding some salt, a little bit of sugar, and by the way, this is considered to be something like a recipe for kids. Milk is almost boiling, I will put in the pasta. Don't forget to stir, we don't want our pasta to glue together. And in about 3-4 minutes, it's ready. So my kids' breakfast looks like this. Some tea, a few biscuits with some dried apricots, and yes, our milk soup. Okay, it's time for me to cook some lunch. And today I'm planning to cook some green wash. Or sometimes it's simply called green soup. Why it is called green soup? Because we're gonna put a lot of spinach into it. Actually, the traditional recipe says that we will need to use sorrel instead of spinach. But sorrel is available in Russia mostly in summer and now it's still March, so we don't have any sorrel in the supermarket, but we have a lot of spinach everywhere. Like, you know, frozen, fresh. I'm gonna use fresh today. And yes, a very interesting fact. People who live in villages, they sometimes use nettle instead of spinach or sorrel. But they only use the fresh one. The one that appears on the loans in May. They pick it up and they put it into the soup. Uh, by the way, this is George's most favorite type of soup. So I think he should be really happy when he comes back home from school and sees that we're going to have this green borscht for lunch today. So. Let me show you how I usually make it. So these are the ingredients that we will need. I already cut uh, turkey meat into pieces like that. You can use any type of meat that you like. Then we will need a potato, a carrot, and an onion. And I'm not chopping the onion because my kids don't like it in the soup. So I'm just gonna put it in like this and then I will take it out when the soup is ready. So let's salt it. Uh, it's definitely not enough salt. I will need to add some more. And yes, the spinach. Now I'm using the fresh one, but when the fresh one is not available, I can put in the frozen, the frozen type that is salt here in Russia, but fresh one is always better. I will boil a few eggs and I will add them later on when the soup is ready into the bowls. And yes, I will take some herbs to sprinkle the soup when it's ready. The usual types, dill, parsley and some green onions. Yeah. Okay, and I forgot to mention the sour cream. Yes, we will add 
a spoon of sour cream before eating the soup. So let's add a little bit more of salt, maybe more. And I'll put some salt into this pan that I will use for, for boiling eggs. And while the meat is going to be cooking, I will put vegetables into the water so that they won't turn black. So the water is boiling and I can put in the meat to boil and the eggs. I will cook the meat for about 20 minutes, half an hour. The meat is still boiling, it's not ready yet, but I want to start cutting the vegetables now, you know, just to save myself some time. And I'm cutting potato in the usual way, into squares like this. And yeah, I will put it back into the water, simply to keep it fresh before I'll put it into the pot. As for the carrot, today I want to cut it in a special way. I want it to look really nice in the soup. So I'm going to cut it into something that looks like flowers. Nothing difficult really guys, just, um, just watch me how I do it. Well, maybe not like a very nice flower, but it does look like a flower. Let's not forget to take off the foam while the meat is boiling, just to keep the broth clear. Potato and carrot go into the pot, and now I will prepare the spinach. I'm only gonna use the leaves, so I'm uh, tearing away the stems but I don't see any big problem if you will put everything into the pot together with the stems. Now I'm not gonna use the whole package, I'll probably use this much. Let's give our spinach a little shower. Now I'm preparing some parsley, dill and green onions. I will first wash them and then chop them. And I like to do that with scissors. Let's peel the eggs. And now let's cut the spinach and put it into the soup. And by the way, yeah, we will cook the spinach only for about a minute, so our soup is almost done. The soup is in the plate, let's put in our boiled eggs. Let's sprinkle everything with herbs. And of course, let's put in a tablespoon of sour cream. Well, I think that... The flower-shaped carrots really, really make everything look much nicer, like really nice. Okay guys, uh, right now it's time for me to start making some dinner for my family. I'm going to make meatballs, chicken meatballs. In Russian we call them katleti. And I'm going to fry some potatoes to go together 
with uh, the meatballs. <laughs> Actually, frankly speaking, this is the most typical type of dinner for a Russian family. Meatballs with something else, like mashed potatoes or fried potatoes or something else. Uh, the only problem that I have today is that we're actually having a parents meeting today at school. Well, not at school because of COVID. I'm going to get connected to, um, to the parents meeting using Zoom. But nevertheless, <laughs> it's going to start in five minutes already. So I don't have much time. So actually, I'm going to be cooking, filming for you, and I'm going to be listening to what the teacher is saying during the meeting so <laughs> it's gonna be pretty messy but whatever like I still have to cook dinner for my family so I need to do it and I need to do it now okay so let's start making what we have to make so the meat is ready I have no idea how much I have here I'm gonna chop one onion just so that it would fit into my mid mincer. So let's mince everything. Now I'm going to blend some bread, an egg, and some milk in a separate bowl. I'm adding this mixture into the minced meat. Let's mix it all together very well. And of course, let's not forget about the salt. Let's heat up the frying pan and add some vegetable oil. I'm using sunflower seed oil. Now I'm going to wet my hands and I'm gonna shape this meat bread mass into something that looks like this. Not exactly round, more oval shaped, but this is the traditional shape of Russian meatballs. Let them first fry from one side. Now I'll turn them over. And I'll cover them with a lead and lower the heat to medium. I already peeled some potatoes to fry and yes the parents meeting is on that's Alex's teacher they had a little delay of about like 15 minutes giving me a possibility to cook the meatballs but now I have to like listen to it and cook and this is not convenient I just hope that I won't burn the wires while I'm cooking now I'm going to cut potatoes into stripes, not very thin. Well, the shape is actually similar to the french fries that you can buy in McDonald's or in cafes or elsewhere. Now I'm drying the potatoes with a towel. And I will be frying it using some vegetable oil and also a little bit of butter. Now I'm putting potatoes on a heated frying pan. I will add some salt. Close the lid and I will cook it on medium heat until it's ready. But of course we will have to turn it over so that it won't burn. And it's very important to let it cook until it has this uh, golden brown crisp. When you can easily break a piece of potato, it means that it's ready. 
And yes, guys, this is not burned. It is supposed to look like this. And by the way, this is the tastiest part of it. So today for dinner, we are having meatballs, fried potatoes, and some sour crab. This is the one that my mom-in-law makes. And it has like a lot of vitamin C, so Russian people do like to eat sour crab throughout winter. And it goes really well together with fried potatoes. So everyone, it's uh, evening time. Actually, it's, it's 9 p.m. already. My family is fed, happy and content. And uh, the kids are going to be getting ready to go to sleep in about half an hour or so. I uh, hope you enjoyed my today's video. I hope it gave you a little possibility to forget about your everyday problems and simply to relax while watching it. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.